big rig, and a smartphone. At first glance, they don't seem to have much in common. Our reporter, Matas Kurat, begs to differ. Taking a closer look, he discovers that the smartphone and the truck have lots in common. Only a few years ago, truck drivers were left to their own devices on the road. Devices like the CB radio, which only worked within a limited radius. Their GPS was a road atlas. And if they were lucky, they had a cassette deck for music. The first mobile phones, if they had one, looked more like a briefcase than a telephone. And using them just to place anything but an emergency call was too expensive for truckers on a budget. But Matas remembers how phones kept getting smaller and cheaper. They acquired the ability to send text messages, and trucks got their own fax machines, so the dispatcher could send jobs or other information straight to the driver in the cab. Today, sat-nav and telematic systems are indispensable to the road freight industry. Trucks report their positions to a control center along with status reports and alarms, making for a much smoother overall flow of operations. Al Matis makes the comparison with a smartphone, which also sends out user data, such as the current position. Many people store their contacts and photos in the cloud. The telephone can even tell which friends are nearby and contact them, or it can download information over Bluetooth from special transmitters. Drivers use vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure communication. Trucks equipped with these systems can warn each other about road hazards and traffic congestion. This is a key component of the continuing automation of road transport operations. In autumn 2015, Daimler presented the self-driving truck equipped with Highway Pilot, a system that uses sensor data to steer the truck autonomously on the highway. Now Daimler has introduced the next level, the Highway Pilot Connect, which strings several vehicles together into convoys, called here platoons. Matas takes the opportunity to climb into a truck together with Daimler's head of pre-development, Martin Seilinger. The Highway Pilot Connect is based on the Highway Pilot that Daimler presented in October 2015. What advantages does it add? The Highway Pilot automates front, back, and lateral control. That's the system's basis. And Highway Pilot Connect establishes a radio connection to other vehicles in the group. The truck that's the farthest ahead signals to the others its willingness to form a platoon. The drivers are notified by the display and they can activate the Highway Pilot along with the Highway Pilot Connect. The next truck then follows in the slipstream of the one ahead. And the driver doesn't have to steer. A monitor displays the view from the cab of the lead truck so he knows what's ahead. Matas asks what the advantages of platooning are. Seilinger explains that this electronic hitching, as he calls it, lets the vehicles rely on one another. One truck follows another, and the distance between them is reduced to just 15 meters. Matas points out that in Germany, vehicles on the highway have to maintain a minimum distance of 50 meters, and the system's 15 meters is quite a bit less. Is it still safe? Seilinger asserts that it is, explaining that the driver's reaction times are variable. But with the electronic hitching, they don't have to worry about that. There's a maximum of a tenth of a second delay in the system's response. The vehicle reacts immediately to what the lead truck is doing. That makes a distance of 15 meters safe.
Around 400 sensors collect information continually and can even spot obstacles before the driver does. People behind the wheel have a reaction time of about 1.4 seconds, but the Highway Pilot Connect conveys the brake signal from the lead truck to those in less than a tenth of a second. Montes realizes that this means the distance between the vehicles after an emergency braking could be longer than if a human had applied the brakes. Seilinger confirms that. He adds that stepping hard on the brakes will automatically trigger a full stopping maneuver and keep the distance between vehicles constant. But there are other drivers on the road who might try to cut in between the trucks when they exit the highway, for example. Mata says a car has just merged up ahead. How will the system cope? Seilinger replies the system will increase the distance. It does this with the help of a plausibility check. The distance the radar sensor detects combined with the GPS data shows that another car has merged in between the two trucks, and so it sets a greater distance. If, for example, a lane is closed and the trucks have to change lanes, all the drivers in the platoon will have to steer manually. The system has a provisional certification, and the market launch is only waiting for legislative approval. Industry-wide standardization is needed so drivers will be able to use the technology no matter what brand of car they have. Montes is amazed that over 100 million lines of software code go into the modern tractor-trailer rig, more than in a passenger plane and way more than in a smartphone. So the phone and the truck have much in common, but while he can load 32 gigabytes of data onto the phone, if he tried to load it with 32 tons of freight, the difference between the two would be crushingly obvious.